Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. Day before yesterday on ESPN First Take, uh, Stephen A. Smith, Kendra Perkins, and these guys went on a complete onslaught. Uh, on LeBron James, like a total onslaught on him, and they were just getting in his ass, man. They were really just uh, going at him, and we produced a bunch of shows, and we still got more stuff to talk about today. Obviously, depends on the order in which you're seeing these shows, so you want to stick around the channel. Uh, one of the reasons you want to subscribe and all notifications so you don't miss anything. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that, but there was something that was sent to me by one of our viewers uh, yesterday. So he sent me a clip, and I saw the clip, and I was looking for the full clip, but I couldn't find it. But he sent me a clip of something that was very, very revealing to me. And what was more revealing was Keyshawn Johnson's reaction. Essentially, what happened was there was a clip that he was able to find of Rick Buecher on Undisputed. And on this day, it was Rick Buecher, Keyshawn Johnson, of course, Skip Bayless. And they were talking about the Lakers offseason chances and all of that. And then Rick Buecher says something that I was absolutely like I I could I was so surprised, but not even surprised. I was shocked by this because I didn't even know that this is what takes place behind the scenes. So Rick Buecher's talking, and essentially he says that at a certain points in the season he received an email. Get this, an email from the Clutch Sports Agency. Basically asking him to vote for LeBron James for MVP. And after he said it, I wish we could show a still of Keyshawn Johnson's face. Keyshawn had this look on his face like he knew that that would be true. But he was like, why are you saying this out loud kind of thing? And I was like, wait, wait, what? What's going on here? So what we want to do is we want to quickly play what Rick Buecher had to say. It's only about a 30 to 40 second clip. And then we're going to come back and really get into the meat and potatoes of the show. Take a listen to what Rick Buecher had to say here on Undisputed the other day. A year older. Anthony Davis, if anybody's going to leave them, it is Anthony Davis. I was actually shocked that I got a text or an, an, an email from the Clutch Agency that was uh, promoting LeBron James for MVP. And I was like, wait a minute. He's not even the MVP of his team. <laughs> this team doesn't have the record that it has, isn't where it is, isn't the dangerous opponent that it is mm. without Anthony Davis Boy, being uh, healthy. I was. AD's a clutch player. Yes, exactly. Okay. Believe me, a lot of yeah. freaking flags went up okay. when, I, when, I, when I read that. But that said. So you heard what Rick Buecher had to say there. Hmm. Hmm. I see. I see. I see. Hmm. Folks, Houston, we got a problem. We got a very, 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 very serious problem on our hands, folks. You know, just yesterday, and we produced a show about this. Less than 24 hours ago, we produced a show on our channel that I suggest you guys go watch of Stephen A. Smith saying on live television on ESPN First Take with the panel of Kendrick Perkins, Molly Karam, and Shannon Sharp, where he essentially said that LeBron allowed people to approach Kendrick Perkins because they did not like the narratives that he was putting out there because it did not align with their views and the message that they wanted disseminated to the public. And we were like, what? You got these guys secretly confronting media members to say things that they want? Wait a minute. So basically, if they're not expressing the views you want expressed to the public, then you're going to tell them to say otherwise. What? Is this what really goes on in sports media? 
is this what happens when you really decide to be, hey, man, I want to make the big dollars and make the big bucks. This is the game you have to play. This is what you have to do. Is this what it entails? A bunch of journalists up there twerking it up all over the place, slapping each other with honey, running up and down the hallway, hollering, go James, go James. Is that what it is? Is that really what it is? Why y'all sending emails to ask people to, to solicit votes for you for MVP? My argument is why can't it just be based on merit? You do the work. We observe the work. We scrutinize the work and say, hey, listen, you deserve it or he deserves it or the other guy deserves it. Why do we need to go into all of these extracurricular activities to get people to do that? And let me tell you something interesting that happened. I noticed it this morning. This is how they control narratives at ESPN. And it's how they fool a lot of you boo-boo the fools out there. Kendrick Perkins went on ESPN yesterday. And he said, day before yesterday, and said he thinks LeBron should retire. And he thinks that the more he plays, it's hurting his legacy. Guess what happened today on ESPN? They brought up the exact same question. And guess what Tim Legler said? No, I think it's helping his legacy. ESPN got to be a joke, man. If they're so transparent, these are the people that are giving us sports. The question I have is, who do we know out there in sports media that's actually saying what they actually think? This is the question. This needs to be the new challenge. The new challenge is say what you believe. Who are the people? I think they're very, very few. Very few. The rest of them are busy playing the political game. These guys should go into politics. They talk about politicians. Y'all should just join pol politicians. Y'all are not y'all are not concerned with the audience. The audience is just people to just watch them up there basically shake each other hand, shake each other's hands in front of cameras and do all of that other stuff. They're not up there to really say what they do. There are a few people that used to call it like it is, and I'll say some of the names that from my personal view. Steven Jackson used to. I don't I haven't followed Steven Jackson much recently, but he used to keep it funky on TV, especially when he was on the show uh speak for yourself that's now turned into speak go back and watch some of steven jackson's old clips he used to keep it real on those shows like real 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 he used to call it exactly like it is matt barnes used to do it on espn first i don't not espn first take on espn a few times he used to do it who does it now today in my personal view charles barkley does it Charles Barkley is saying what he truly, 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 truly believes. The rest, I can't really call it. The rest, I just cannot call it. There's some people, you look at them, they look like they're about to say what they really think and they'll hold back. Nah, let's not say it like that. Oh, let's not say it that way. Nah, we don't really want to say that. We don't really want. That's why Rachel Nichols was getting so uncomfortable yesterday with Paul Pierce when he was talking. We did another show about that. You should go watch that. This is what sports media is all about. This is it. This was it. This is it. This is it. This is what people aspire to be. So yesterday, a video was sent to me from the interview on Gil's Arena featuring uh, with, 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 with the guest, uh, Mark Jackson, right? Now, funny enough, I had seen bits and pieces of it, but I hadn't seen it in, in its entirety. So he sends me this clip where he essentially said, listen, did you get a chance to hear uh, Mark Jackson pushing back on J.J. Reddick's comments that he made about, you know, Michael Jordan's era and it being watered down and all of that stuff? Did you get a chance to hear it? And I'm like, no, I didn't really hear it. So he sent me the timestamp where he wanted me to go hunt down the, the information from. And I went to go, I went to the clip to go to go listen to it. And then I found it. Now, some of you may be saying, OK, what did J.J. Reddick said? So what we want to do is want to quickly play what J.J. Reddick had to say before uh, on uh, when he was talking to Shaq on a big podcast, because that's what got people reacting. And then we to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what J.J. Reddick had to say here. It's one of the reasons that LeBron is so great. I, I, I have refused literally. And people will be like, uh, you said this in 2017 when you played against him. Well, no, I was playing against him. Of course, I said he was the best player ever. I refuse to get into the GOAT debate. I don't care. They didn't play against each other. I do not care. What makes him great, well, a bunch of things, but what has made him great is the fact that he's done it now for 21 years at the highest level. Like, 
You talk about scoring. That's great. So one guy averaged 35 a year. Yeah, LeBron's never averaged 35 in a year. Guess what? He's averaged 25 or more for 20 straight years. No one's had more than 15 of those years. Like that to me is he's a scorer. But, but again, it looks differently. It, he plays differently. So it's all, it's all in the eye of the beholder. LeBron is great to me because he's always done it the right way. When I played with LeBron, he was the greatest young leader I've ever seen. Man, stop stealing stuff from my podcast. No, man. he was. No, like, because cause I. <laughs> no, because when I. I mean, listen, I, I know he was, and I'm such a dominant personality. Like, I'm the guy that. I'm the guy that no matter what team I'm going to, this is my. Nobody says. But when I got there, like, he just. He just ran it so perfectly. The way he treated the guys, the way he treated the organization, the way he was coached, the way he looked out for guys. Like, I don't even have to do nothing. And, you know, we were. We definitely had a chance to win. We were in first the whole year, and Big Baby with his wife broke my hand. I had to be out for six weeks, and we came out and lost to Boston. I, I wish I wish I wouldn't have had that, that, that absence away from LeBron, but he was one of the greatest young leaders that I've always seen. So he will always be in that in that conversation. The only thing I don't like about the conversation is they don't put my boy's name in it. You're right. I don't get either. But if you're going to be throwing names around, got it. You, you gotta have my boy's name in it, right? You know what I'm saying, Dwight. That, that's like, huh? Yeah, Dwight. That's like, that's like saying, that's like saying, what are the best luxury cars out there, Lexus or a Beamer? You gotta put the Mercedes in there too. Yeah. Just, just I don't like. I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't give. A I, I don't I, care. I truly don't. But Mike, LeBron, or Kobe. Now y'all debate. That's, that's all I say about it. I think it's fair to just say there are different tiers of greatness. And you could, by the way, like, I think it's fair even to be like, who's your Mount Rushmore? Who's your, who's your four greatest? Or who's your five greatest? Who's your, who's your 10 greatest? Whatever it may be. Like, we're, we're, we're nitpicking. By the way, a lot of times we're comparing errors. We're comparing different rules. We're comparing the fact that, look, like I'll say this with Michael Jordan. And, and I don't mean this to be controversial. But like everybody talks about all these, the, the context of this era. Michael Jordan, the Dallas Mavericks were, were, were added as the 23rd team in 1981. Jordan was drafted. During his heyday, six teams were added to the NBA. There were 90 players added to the NBA. Like, that, that, does that not water down? I'm not talking playoffs, by the way. No chance we're talking playoffs. Does that not water down the regular season to a degree? You lived it. You lived it. Right? Yeah. You played against some of those teams. You played against the Bobcats, right, when they first came out. Yeah. Like, if we add two teams in two or three years, we get a Vegas franchise or a Seattle franchise, you're not telling me that the league for a little bit is going to be a little watered down? Maybe, a little bit. So you heard J.D.'s um, original comments. So while Mark Jackson was on the panel, they asked him to weigh in on what JJ had to say and what he believes about Michael Jordan in terms of his goal status. And in typical Mark Jackson form, he did not disappoint whatsoever. So for those of you who didn't hear what Mark Jackson had to say on um, Gil's Arena, I want to play exactly what he had to say for you now. I want to come back and react to his comments. Take a listen to what he had to say here. So Mark, one more thing I want to get to you on before we hit up mostly fans. So JJ Reddick was on Shaq's podcast recently, talked about how MJ's prime was watered down in the NBA due to expansion. You came into the league a season before the first wave of expansion uh, with the Hornets and Heat debuting in 1988 and Magic and T-Wolves in 1989. What impact did expansion have on the quality of competition in the league in the early stages? And would you say that the league was watered down or do you disagree with that statement? I disagree. Yes. Okay. I disagree. Point for Gilbert. I mean, <laughs> it, I mean you, had, you had very good talent on those teams. You can go back and, and, and you, you look at those teams that came into the league and the way that they picked guys off of different rosters throughout the league, signed free agent, had draft choices. There's no disrespect to Michael Jordan. I mean, Michael Jordan is the GOAT. He's the GOAT. I don't, I don't, I don't care who he played against. He's the GOAT. He played against legit dudes. And I, I can say if there's, if there's 25, 30 teams in the league in 1990, there's a bunch of max players if you fast forward and bring them in 2024 on every single roster. 
You can't tell me that's not a max guard over there. That's not a max power forward. That's not a max combo guard over here. I'm just a regular dude. But the bottom line is the talent level can be debated. So I understand what J.J. was trying to say. And sometimes we say things to draw the attention. Michael Jordan, there's only five people alive that played against, five people in history that played against Jordan, LeBron, and Kareem. And I'm fortunate enough to be one of them. Michael Jordan is the GOAT basketball player, and he's, he's the reason why a lot of guys don't have jewelry, <laughs> and they put, they put the work in, a lot of greats. That's why I don't believe that everybody that, every, everybody that don't win a championship is not a champion, and there's some dudes that got rings that's they're not champions. Yeah. So you heard what Mark Jackson had to say. What are my thoughts on his comments? Listen, J.J. <sighs> Reddick thinks he's smart, uh, slick, excuse me, but a lot of his contemporaries called him out. What some people fail to understand is that J.J. Reddick has a bias. And his bias in, in, informs the opinions that he gives and the information he shares and the information he chooses to withhold. So in that particular instant, when he was talking about the league being watered down and expansion teams and all of that, he refused. He, he, he also chose not to include... When he started adding teams, number one, they were getting drafting from other teams, NBA teams. Number two, you know, you know, one of those teams that they drafted, you know, who had on it. You ever heard of the player Shaquille O'Neal? You ever heard of Penny Penny Harder? You ever heard of those guys? Yeah, th those were one of the teams, Orlando Magic. So as they were adding all of these teams, those were the players that were appearing in the NBA arena that Jordan was going up against. The Shaqs of the world. People forget Jordan faced a young Shaq who was quite dominant, my boy. Very, very dominant. So. A lot of NBA players called him out on that particular point. Listen, I cannot take J.J. Reddick seriously when it comes to this GOAT debate and this, this era debate and all of that. I just can't. Too many people, too many respectable figures in sports have disputed the vast majority of what he had to say. Too many respectable voices. Too many. For me to say, okay, this guy is a credible source of information when it comes to these things. He's not. Too many people. And I'm not just talking about run-of-the-mill NBA players. We're talking about Pantheon guys. Dominique Wilkins, Jerry West, some of the greatest defenders of all time, Michael Cooper, Bob Cousy, and other contemporaries like Bonzi Wells, Rasheed Wallace, and other guys. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on of players that have disputed. I think Gilbert Arenas disputed him as well. But the list has gone on and on and on and on of people that have disputed J.J. Reddick. J.J. Reddick works for LeBron James, man. He doesn't work for him, but that's his boy. And that's what he's here to prop up. I'm, I'm really getting into the GOAT debate and then immediately get into why this guy can shouldn't be considered the GOAT if you're looking at this. That's what he's doing. That is exactly what he did. What I'm happy for is that now people see uh, people see, th see through it. He ain't convincing nobody, in my personal view. They're not convincing me. They're not convincing people that are like-minded uh, that, that, that think the way I think on this issue. I don't, we're not being convinced of it. Nice try, but I think you got to try a little bit harder. These are my thoughts. Let me get into this topic here. So a few hours ago, less than, uh, let me say less than 24 hours ago, Stephen A. Smith released a show on his channel on the Stephen A. Smith uh, show uh, where he, it had the headline saying LeBron James needs to take more accountability. It's about a 13 second clip that he published. So I decided to, to click on it to watch and see what he was talking about so as i was as i was watching he was talking about the things that were said and then he said something quite interesting which was the following he said that because if you guys know he just on i think monday there was a panel of him kendrick perkins and these guys on on, on espn first take where kendrick perkins was just really getting annoyed with lebron james and then he said stephen a smith on live air said that lebron allowed people to approach kendrick perkins about his views against LeBron James that, that didn't align with what they wanted him to say about LeBron James publicly. So as he was talking, he then revealed some pretty surprise or shocking information to me, which was he said that based on the things that are occurring right now and some of the moves that LeBron has been making, he said that Kendrick Perkins is actually considering removing LeBron James out of his goat or removing him from the goat debate because of some of these moves, some of his moves. 
So what we want to do right now is want to play exactly what Stephen A. Smith had to say on his show uh, about Kendrick Perkins. And I want you guys to listen carefully to what he had to say there. And I want to come back and continue on. Take a listen to what Stephen A. Smith had to say here. Say no more. Because at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to. By the way, even Kendrick Perkins is rethinking his position on calling LeBron James the GOAT. Because with GOAT status comes accountability. This is not a ninth coach that LeBron James has had in his 21-year career. He's going to have, he's going to be on his 10th coach. Now Shaq had 13. Kobe had 10. You know, Jason Kidd had nine. We get all of that. Okay? But look at this right here. LeBron James, Cavaliers, Paul Silas, Brenda Malone as an interim, Mike Brown for five years, Heat with Eric Spolstra. If it were up to LeBron, one could argue that wouldn't have happened because LeBron wasn't high on Eric Spolstra when he first arrived. Pat Riley just let him know, no, bro, you ain't running this organization. I am. Eric Spolstra ain't going no damn place. And sure enough, Eric Spolstra has proven to be one of the great, great coaches in the history of the game. You got Cavaliers coach David Blatt. Well, David Griffin, the GM at the time, didn't really want Blatt. Ownership wanted Blatt, but they wouldn't have picked Blatt if, if LeBron James had spoken up and fought for Ty Lue, which he didn't do. So you had to deal with Blatt for a year and some games before they ultimately got rid of him and inserted Ty Lue in there and then they won the championship. Then you got the Lakers with Luke Walton, who LeBron James did not, he inherited, he didn't pick him. But then you had something to do with Frank Vogel being there. You had something to do with Darvin Ham being there. I'm not going to even get into the fact that I don't like the fact that he didn't speak up for the brother. That would have been nice. Darvin Ham in two years take you to the Western Conference Finals. I mean, you would think you go to the Western Conference Final last year. This year, you get bounced out in the first round. But both losses were to the Denver Nuggets, who's universally recognized up to this point, up before Saturday, as the best team in basketball. So I'd have done that. All right, I, I'd have fought for Darvin Ham. But we knew from the time that Anthony Davis spoke out about how discombobulated and disorganized they were following their game two loss in Denver. We knew the days were numbered for, uh, for Darvin Ham. We knew that. That's what Anthony Davis did, did on purpose. So you heard what Stephen A. Smith had to say. Ladies and gentlemen, um, when he said what he said about Kendrick Perkins the other day, about him having, I was very surprised by that. But we knew this already. Or at least we, we, we've we been speculating about this. Because of all of these people that we have in media that sit up there every single day and twerk it up all over the screen, knock over people's drinks, run up and down the hallway, slapping each other with honey, hollering, goat James, goat James, goat James. These people just can't help it. And then what, what really pisses them off is, is that when you try to walk away from them, they grab you by the wrist and try to pull you to sit, to pull them on the ground and start twerking with them. And they get mad when you ain't not, when, when, when you ain't up there twerking it up with them. It's like, yo, bro, I don't want no honey, man. I'm good. I'm good. I get that you like his beard. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need no LeBron James bed sheets. Like a man. I, I'm good, son. I'm good. Let me live. They just can't help it. They gotta twerk it up. Knocking over coffee cups, spilling drinks all over the place, disrupting the peace, waking up people at night because they just got to twerk. They just cannot stop gyrating all over the damn screen. You listen to Nick Wright, you have to hold your television down because of how much twerking he be doing. One of these days, you're going to see uh, a Kevin Wilde just ball up a piece of paper and throw it at his twerking, but it probably gets stuck to his face with all that honey that he be rubbing all over his body talking about LeBron. You can't take these people serious. You just can't. You just cannot take these people seriously. And what is happening is that Kendrick Perkins is reaching a point where it's like, yo, bro, I'm good. I, enough is enough, man. Enough is enough. Like, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I don't think Kendrick Perkins is viewing LeBron like, oh, LeBron James. I think he's viewing him as somebody he knew from his childhood. It's like, yo, bro, you bugging right now. Forget about the fact that you are who you are. Man to man, you bugging. Like, I don't like your moves. I don't like the moves you be making. That's what I'm calling out. That's what I'm, that's what's beginning to irritate. That's what uh, 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 Chris Broussard said to Nick Wright just the other day. He said that, listen, no one is saying that, you know, it isn't joint blame or whatever it is with the Lakers situation with Darvin Ham. He said, what, may, what makes people get aggravated is LeBron's refusal to take any 
accountability or responsibility. As the leader, you should be the first one to step up, step up to the plate and say, hey, listen, we messed up as a group. And he's saying all too often, LeBron is running and hiding and ducking and running, hiding under the desk. It wasn't me. And that is what's annoying Kendrick Perkins. I think he's beginning to get annoyed with the person because of these moves. And when you see a person, a staunch LeBron James supporter, run, that used to say, oh, LeBron is the GOAT. And all, it was Kendrick Perkins talking about he the GOAT. For him to get to that point, he's like, yo, bro, I can't take it no more, man. I can't take it. And it also tells me that there's a lot of stuff that has happened behind the scenes that you and I don't know about. Has Stephen A. Smith not said what he said on ESPN first take? I would have never known that. He just took us behind the curtain. I never knew any of this. I never knew. But Kendrick Perkins has been getting irritated with LeBron over the last few weeks. He's been getting irritated with the passive aggression. People are beginning to see through this. It's beginning to become too much. Too much. Then now you have staunch supporters, zealots, zealots. Some of y'all wonder who, what is a zealot. You ever played Halo 2? You know them dudes? They be running around with them, 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 them big ass lightsabers, them, them swords. They be jumping out of the clock, jumping out of the, 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 the like just disappear and appear. They, they, they will chase you. If them dudes catch you, they will hunt you down for the rest of your life. Those people, that's how the Nick Rice and these boys be acting on television. These dudes. He used to be one of them. He's like, nah, I can't take it no more. I, I, can't, I can't deal with this no more. I can't support this. That's Kendrick Perkins doing that, saying that. Uh, Stephen A. Smith is not letting up on LeBron's ass right now. Like, he is not stopping. Like, he is not He is not letting up. He's really, really uh, going at him. And this really all kicked off on Monday on ESPN First Take where he just absolutely obliterated LeBron James all over the damn television screen. Calling him out for his antics, for getting people getting people approached to that don't share his views, his this, this fetish that he has for controlling. And he called it all out. And he didn't stop. Because as you guys know, um, I think he usually films the show in the morning. And then after that, he films his podcast. And then uh, what happened? So yesterday he published a show on his podcast, um, the Stephen A. Smith show, where he then decided to take it a step further and really, really get into his thoughts and views and opinions on Le uh, what is it? Darvin Ham being fired and some of the things that LeBron has done and has been doing over his career. They just really, really. Uh, 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 really irk him about LeBron James. And I'm surprised because he's not letting up. So uh, what we want to do is want to play exactly what Stephen A. Smith had to say on the Stephen A. Smith show uh, yesterday. Uh, no, today, excuse me. And then we're going to come back and react to his comments, really get into the meat and potatoes of the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. Why am I asking these questions about LeBron? Because what we got to stop acting. Ladies and gentlemen, is LeBron James worthy of the GOAT conversation or not? I'm, for me, it's MJ all day, every day. But for some of you young whippersnappers, breath smelling like Similac wet behind the ears who don't know no damn better, of course you're going to say LeBron James. Fine. Are you willing to concede that if we're having a conversation about who the true GOAT is, that some level of accountability must come with it? When has LeBron James spoken up for a coach? Remember how Michael Jordan was like, when Phil's gone, I'm gone. You ain't get rid of him. Remember how Patrick Ewing used to stick up for Jeff Van Gundy? Remember how Alonzo Morton stuck up for Pat Riley? Remember that? Remember that? Now, I noticed a pattern, and one could easily argue that, you know, the white coaches get stuck up for. We ain't hear about brothers being stuck up for. Okay, that's a different subject for another day. That's not necessarily applicable here, just worth noting from a curiosity standpoint. But here's my point about LeBron James. How can you be on a Mount Rushmore of basketball and be completely innocent at the same time for every coach that gets let go under your watch? How is that possible? How? I mean, you listen to Rich Paul and these folks in his camp. What? Why don't you just put a turban or something around LeBron James and call him Gandhi? Does he do anything wrong? Does he? You know, when I get a little nervous, I go to the toilet.
You see other people do stuff all the time. They pass gas. They burp. Sometimes, not me, but I've been around people who clearly forgot to take a damn shower or preferred not to. They stink. Or they might take a shower and think their soap is refreshing to everybody else as they may believe it is to them. Don't put on no damn deodorant and they still stink. We're human beings. Shit happens. Except if you're LeBron James. It's never that. Never. Coach come, coach go. Nothing to do with you. Rob Palenka, I guess Rob Palenka, running the Los Angeles Lakers, having just won a championship in a bubble, I guess he was the one that said, we really, really want Russell Westbrook here. And we want to trade away Kyle Kuzma and Kentavious Caldwell Pope and let Alex Caruso walk out the door to the Chicago Bulls for nothing. I guess Rob Palenka did that all by himself. LeBron James had nothing to do with it. Anthony Davis had nothing to do with it. Come on, y'all. It's not a crime if you did. The crime is acting like you have nothing to do with these things. I can tell you this for a fact. Let me tell you something about this woman, Jeannie Buss, the board of governor for the Los Angeles Lakers, part owner, a wonderful woman with a beautiful soul. Let me tell you something about Jeannie Buss. There is nothing more important to her than keeping LeBron James happy. Absolutely, positively nothing. Not Palika, not any of the players, not any of the coaches. I mean, she does, listen, better not mess with Linda Rambis. Jeannie ain't having that. And damn it, I might fight you too, because I've grown to love Linda. Okay? But that's about the only safe person with Jeannie Buss. No one else is untouchable with her. But LeBron James. He going to get his three-year extension. He going to get his money. Hell, if he wants them to, they'll grab Bronny. So you heard what he had to say. Let me tell you guys what I think is taking place here. And Stephen A. Smith alluded to this a few weeks ago. I think that Stephen A. Smith is taking it upon himself to fight this thing that LeBron likes to do, which is controlling the narrative. And he pointed it out on the Stephen A. Smith show after we got the word that LeBron and J.J. Reddick were coming out with the show Mind the Game. He said that he believes that the reason they're actually producing this show together is that LeBron wants to have a show where he can go out there and essentially rewrite history. And that's what he has been doing. That is essentially what he has been trying to do. He now is trying to go back and retroactively change history. He did it with what happened with the title that they lost in 2011. Oh, no, we needed more help and all of this. Then he now tried to go back and talk about why he didn't win defensive player of the year. Basically, he's trying to rewrite the way we think about the events that occurred in the past. And he knows he has a, 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 a an army of gullible fans that would go back, hear what he had to say. And, well, well, now that you think about it, I mean, LeBron should have won an MVP and a, a defensive player. Of the year. And it, some of these guys would be like, well, I mean, he should have. So therefore, you know what? F it. I'm going to count it that he won it anyway. Even though he ain't win it, LeBron thought he should have won it. So he won it. We're going to count it anyway, because we just cannot stop twerking. We must twerk. We have to twerk. It has been programmed in us to twerk it up all over the goddamn place and knock over people's drink. We just, we must do this. And Stephen A. Smith, I believe, is combating this. I think that he is making it his, his, it, his business to push back on this. Do you also remember the time when Stephen A. Smith told Rich Paul to get the F out of his face? When Rich Paul, when he said that he has LeBron ranked number two all time and Rich Paul said that's disrespectful and he told him to get the F out of my face on the Paul George podcast. These people actually approach you if you don't have their view. Like they'd be coming up to you trying to convince you. They want it to be a uniform across the entire sports media landscape especially in big media that all of these people up there on tv saying that lebron is a goat we know this nick wright is represented by clutch sports you know this shannon sharp has a very close relationship with those guys that's why he's saying what he's saying who's left who's left they want it to be uni uniform uniformity across the board and i believe that stephen a smith is beginning to get annoyed with this and he's beginning to push back on this because he has had enough he has had enough.
And he's like, I cannot stomach this much longer. I have to say something to stop these guys from once again trying to steal the narrative and rewrite history. People are tired. People are tired. I know some of you guys aren't, some, a lot, but a lot of people are exhausted with this. A lot of people are exhausted. For whatever reason, LeBron just, he will not relinquish the limelight. At this particular point, I don't even know why LeBron is playing at this point. Because his chances of winning a championship are very slim. And I just thought about something. You notice that the Minnesota Timberwolves are up 2-0 uh, on the Denver Nuggets, right? And you notice the Denver Nuggets beat the Lakers in five, but some of those games, just, they struggled. What that tells me is a few things. Number one, Denver may not be as good as they were last year. And number two, the Lakers had no chance. They had absolutely no chance whatsoever. None whatsoever. That's what, that is what this is telling me. That's what it looks like to me. So Stephen A. Smith seems to be on a crusade and he has enough FU money to do it. So go ahead, my brother, and do it.